So the company whose business model I've chosen to analyze is the Seattle Coffee Company. The Seattle Coffee Company is a traditional coffee seller. And by traditional, I mean that their main focus or their main business is coffee. Um, it's not so much food. They do have a few, a few food items available, but the bulk of their business is conducted through the sale of coffee. So we traditionally find them outside or attached to exclusive bookstores, um, which is something we will talk about on the next slide. Um, however, we also have seen a few standalone stores um, pop up in recent times as well as a few garage and petrol station stores, which is something we've seen um, in a recent trend with coffee retailers, such as uh, Mug and Bean on the go, as well as Vita Cafe. So what are the issues I identified and why did I choose Seattle Coffee Company as a business model that I think could be remodeled and improved upon? So the first issue is the niche market they've created for themselves with a partnership with exclusive books. So partnering with exclusive books may have advantages in that it does bring in a few customers who are perhaps browsing in the bookstore and just go across for a coffee. But at the same time, they have limited themselves to the availability, well, the available locations that they can open up. Obviously, exclusive books needs large numbers of people in order to operate. <clears throat> so they need to be in quite large shopping malls and areas where there's lots of um, people passing through. And when you're a coffee company where exposure is important, especially if you want to be selling to large numbers of people, then only being able to open up at these um, few locations is a bit of an issue. Then the second issue is competition. So there's always been local competitions such as Vita Cafe and so on. Um, but Vita Cafe does have far greater exposure. They have far more locations than Seattle Coffee Company. And just in terms of brand exposure, they've definitely outcompeted Seattle Coffee. But then the more pressing and urgent issue, and primarily why I chose to look at the Seattle Coffee Company model, is the arrival of international players, so such as Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. So they've recently opened up in South Africa within the past year or so, and they are definitely here to pose a threat to our local coffee companies. So Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts have two major advantages. Um, firstly, they have um, enormous financial backing. And secondly, um, their brands are very well known. And with that comes the novelty factor of having just opened up in South Africa and everybody's keen to try it for the first time, having seen it online before. So... Seattle Coffee Company needs to be aware of the fact that they're new players on the scene with large financial backing and already the brand exposure that they need to have successful businesses. So the question we have to ask is how do we set Seattle Coffee Company apart in a market that is becoming increasingly saturated? So the way I chose to address this problem is twofold. So it's coffee where you want it and when you want it. So focusing on the where first. So as we've discussed already, Seattle Coffee Company has this partnership with exclusive books, but we have seen a few standalone stores and recently a few positions in garages. So this is playing into the trend that we've seen recently where coffee companies have opened up in garages to create more convenient locations for consumers to pick up coffee. But I think that the time has come to actually step this up a notch and create locations which are specifically um, coffee or Seattle coffee stores, but um, they're essentially drive throughs So um, they don't have to be as big as the one that we've seen on at the bottom right here, which is a, a version that is in the United States presently. It can be as small as a shipping container size store. They just need to be at incredibly convenient locations, so preferably along commuter routes. So people can pull off from the highway or the main road and stop by and pick up their cup of coffee. They don't even need to get out of the car. It would be at most a three-minute diversion. And it just creates accessibility for consumers who want a good cup of coffee on their way to work or their way to a meeting, but don't want to have to drive into a mall, park the car, walk to the coffee shop, buy the coffee, pay for parking, and then navigate their way out of a, out of a parking lot. So the next consideration is when. 
we want to have coffee available to consumers exactly when they want it with no waiting time. So what I propose they do is they create a online order system, preferably an app, where people can go into their phones and say that they'll be at a certain branch in 20 minutes and they want 10 lattes for their next meeting. Um, this is a trend we've seen um, overseas of coffee companies allowing consumers to order coffee online. Um, and it's exactly what people want. They walk into a coffee store. They don't need a long time to decide what they want. Most of the time, they already know why they're going to the coffee store to get two cappuccinos or whatever. So why not let them order in advance, pick up their coffee while it's piping hot, and um, go, continue on with their day without much of a diversion? So that's what I propose Seattle Coffee Company does in order to keep up with the competition, set themselves apart, and create greater exposure, allowing them to grow.